Hi everybody, it's Nicolas Dorier and today I will present you a new update a sub fork uh, to Bitcoin that will hopefully happen in uh, 2021. But before, uh, that is called, it's called Taproot. And uh, before starting, I just want to remind you uh, a bit of the different way of uh, spending an output on, on the Bitcoin blockchain. So um, here in the screen, you can see two transactions. The transaction on the left has one output that gets spent by the transaction on the right. So one transaction is like uh, this box divided by two and bottom is the output up is the input and long time ago like you could basically put a script inside your output and push the arguments in the input so to be clear a script is basically a function that takes some arguments and that return true or false depending of uh, if the argument satisfies the, con the condition to spend uh, uh, the condition of the script and uh, the, the main problem with this is that the, the state of the Bitcoin blockchain is actually not the, the, the blocks. It's uh, the, what we call the UTXO set. It's why that uh, you don't need lots of storage space to have your a full node. You only need like a max, uh, minimum, like maybe 10 gigabytes of, of, uh, of storage uh, to, to, to fire up a full node. And that's why it's, Bitcoin can be so decentralized because it's very cheap to make your own node. But the problem with the, this model a long time ago is basically the script was inside the output. And uh, it means that somebody could blow up the size of the UTXO set and making it very hard for anybody to host a Bitcoin blockchain on, on very small uh, storage space. So uh, that of this model, uh, like the, the scripts were kind of uh, restrained to several other kind of script. And one, one, one of the restrained script was uh, called P2PK. Instead of having any script inside the output, now you can only have, for example, a pop key. To, to be able to spend this output, you need to deliver the signature of this pop key. And uh, appro approximately at the same time, you had also another, another way of doing this, was instead of putting the pop key inside the output, you will put the hash of the pop key. Uh, so it's what P2PKH, P2WPKH are doing. Uh, you can see a hash as a commitment to, to the pop key. What it means is that when the transaction with this output is published, then nobody can change uh, the, the pop key in question. So like we say that the transaction is committing to the pop key. If the pop key was like one byte different, it will give completely different hash. And uh, so we, we say that this hash is a commitment to the pop key. You, you will still need to uh, reveal the public key and the signature when you are spending uh, this coin. And it's, uh, this model is a bit way more efficient in terms of space of the UTXO set because the hash of the pop key is, uh, is uh, shorter than, I think, 12 bytes uh, than, the, uh, than the pop key. So it's, uh, it, it was pretty good. Uh, however, like it was still very limited, uh, like you could only do this and a bunch of other scripts. So P2SH was invented. Uh, P2SH, it's instead of committing to a pop key inside your output, you can commit to a script and this script can be anything that you want. Um, so that's pretty cool because it means that the UTXO set doesn't have, do, doesn't have to store the script. So it can, it can still uh, grow in a controlled fashion. Uh, and like like uh, the P2PKH case, like the script will be revealed uh, at the moment you're, you're spending, okay? So you reveal the script and the signature. Uh, so now we start by talking about uh, pay to taproot. So I, I, I explain you those, uh, all of this past uh, way of spending output because Actually, the two hash that we saw of the pop key and the script are commitments uh, to some way of spending. And um, the commitment in Taproot is actually not a hash. It's a, it's a pop key. That, and this pop key, it's called in the BIP, it's called output pop key. And to spend such output, you have two way of doing. So one way is that you uh, reveal a signature that is valid under this, this output pop key. So it's what you are saying here. And the other way 
is that you can you, you can the pop, the output pop key is also uh, committing to several scripts and you can take one of the scripts and a bit like p2sh uh, when you want to spend you reveal the script uh, you reveal the arguments but on top of this you need to reveal uh, the miracle branch uh, so i will i will explain you a bit later but uh, the the main reason is that as, we, as you will see, the output pop key can commit several scripts at once. So like you need uh, some kind of proof uh, when you're spending that indeed this script was committed to by the output pop key. And we will see how, 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 how exactly it works. So the question now is like, how do you build such output pop key? So let's take an example of a classic two by three multisig wallet uh, owned by Alice, uh, Bob and Carol. Now there is lots of different way to do this kind of uh, th this kind of multisig wallet. So it's just for the purpose of the example. But in this specific way, wha wha what can be said is that a two by three multisig can be spent by, uh, by if Alice and Bob agree, or Alice and Carol agree, or Bob and Carol agree. Okay, there is two three different choices. So. Yeah, uh, with Taproot, you can say, okay, it's three different conditions on which this output can be spent. And out of those three conditions, you are building what we call a Merkle tree. So basically, you hash all those, all those scripts together. And uh, so this is one part of, uh, that is used to build your output key. But on top of this, there is a second thing that is committed to by the output key. Uh, by the output key. It's a, what we call the internal key. And it's very, why we support you can do this. The basic idea is that parties that are concerned about a specific contract might, in most cases, agree to limit the privacy impact of using on-chain transactions. So in, in, in our example, imagine that Bob, Bob and Carol um, agree to spend the output, then they can ask to Alice uh, to to sign with the internal key as well. And basically on the blockchain, you will have only the output key and the signature. So this internal key, uh, it's what we call the um, aggregated key. Key aggregation, uh, the, the way you're doing that safely is by using the protocol you maybe heard about uh, already that is called MUSIC2. I will make a later video about how, how exactly the process is working for doing this. But for, for now, it's enough to say that um, the three peer, Alice, Carol, and Bob, are just generating their own uh, private and public keys. And they can aggregate this in a, in a single key that will represent a bit like a three by three multisig of those three different peers. The other side of key aggregation is signature aggregation. So there is Bob, uh, Carol, and Alice that can uh, create some signature with their private keys. And they can aggregate those signatures into a single signature. And this signature is, is valid under the, uh, the internal key. But one of the main questions that you may have is that this signature will be valid under the internal key, whereas Taproot actually require a signature under the output key. But there is one thing that I forgot to mention to you. So as I told you before, the output key can be built from the internal key with the Merkle root. You can create uh, a script private key, and it's actually this script private key that is that is used to build the output key. And what you see that I show in this screen is basically the output key is nothing but a key aggregated from the internal key plus what I call the script private key. This gray output key that I show you before is not gray at all. It's like it's it's a key that is it's an aggregate key that is composed of uh, Alice, Bob, uh, Carol, and as well this script private key. And as you can see, this script private key you can you can create it with the if you know the internal public key plus the Merkle root. And since all participants in this taproot uh, contract know about both of this information, all of them can uh, generate this uh, script private key. So 
I show you already how to get the, the signature that is on the top left. You know, it's the aggregated signature of the internal key. Once you have the script private key, you can as well create one signature and then you just have to aggregate those two signatures together and it will give you a valid signature under the, the output key as you need it. So if you spend that via the key path, that's basically what, what is showing up on the blockchain. There is only one public key in the output and a tree signature on it like Alice, Bob and Carol. And uh, the, last, the last keys can be calculated by all of these peers. So that's what you're seeing really in the blockchain. But you have another way of spending uh, Taproot. And this other way is using one of the scripts that it commits to. So uh, let's take an example where Bob and Carol agree uh, to, to spend uh, this money. So, and like, let's say for this example that Alice refused to collaborate and refused to, to, to give a partial signature for on the internal key. Still, Alice and Bob can uh, pull back and use uh, what we call the script path uh, for spending the taproot output. And they need to publish, like P2SH, they need to publish the script, the argument, and also a proof that this script is, is uh, committed to by the uh, output key. So this is the Merkle branch. So here, here is an, an example of the Merkle branch. As you can see, the Merkle branch, so for those familiar with all, all Bitcoin blockchain work, it's, it's exactly the same principle. But the only thing that you need to, 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 to see on this is that one of the scripts is actually not revealed on the blockchain. So for example, in this case, Alice plus Bob, so this script is not at all revealed on the blockchain and nobody will be able to see it. So even in this case, it has huge privacy impact. And uh, it's pretty cool because like here I show there is three different contracts, but you can see that you can, you can create like contract that is composed of, for example, 1000 scripts and the number of, uh, and the size of the Merkle branch is quite under control. I think I think it is n log n, uh, depending on the on the on the on the number of scripts. So it's pretty it's pretty good. So this is all I wanted to show you about Tapfruit for today. Uh, the next video will focus more on other uh, interesting things that you can do on top of Tapfruit. Because one thing I forgot to mention is that Taproot is not using ECDSA signature, but not signature. It means that you can do a bunch of uh, very smart things on top of this internal key that I didn't mention right now. Uh, but it will be for another video, like, uh, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you now you have a basic understanding of what is possible with Taproot. I want to thank Ensemble dot com that provide those free icons that I'm using for doing the, all those graphics. It's pretty nice. And uh, I want also to thanks to uh, Ruben Somsen uh, that really helped me understand uh, Taproot. Uh, so you can, you, you can check what he's doing on this link. And if you want more details about uh, the nitty gritty of Taproot, there is three different Bitcoin impro improvement proposal that you can uh, Google about. So uh, 340, 41, 42. Um, that said, it's pretty low level. So it's difficult by reading them to have a good uh, overview about what Taproot really is. And uh, I plan to do um, several videos in the future, maybe two more about Taproot that will uh, pass through other uh, other details and other cool thing you can do with Taproot that I didn't have time to, to, to talk about in this video. Thank you.